Here is the UK's most accomplished world champion. I give you from Nottingham, England, Mr. Carl Frunch. And now the gentleman who holds the WBA world title, undefeated in his career and of course undefeated in tournament action, scarcely losing a handful of rounds in the 35 tournament rounds he has. We obviously anticipate a lot of uh, British fans coming out for this fight. Uh, do you anticipate having some sort of a hometown advantage even though you're in America? I think so, yeah. I think Atlanta City favors me more than what it does Ward. Um, official wise, who knows? You know, he's an American. We're fighting in America. But I don't think he's got many traveling fans coming over from Oakland to watch him in Atlantic City. And of course, in Atlantic City, we had a recent controversy where uh, Paul Williams uh, got a very, very controversial uh, dubious decision over Erislandi uh, Lara. Talk to me about, you know, uh, do you have any reservations about the, the commission and their ability to uh, properly officiate a fight? Um, no, I haven't actually, no. I mean, it's not ideal when, when bad decisions happen. But I don't really go into the fight with any concerns that that's going to happen to me. It's, it's happened in the past in terms of judging and officials, but we, we do what we can on the build-up to the fight to make sure it's, it's done as, as strictly and as, as good as it can. And so it's fair, so the fight's fair. And, you know, every time I box, you know, the, the, the right man really wins in that sense. Although I've got, I've got my arguments with the Mikel Kessler fight, you know, that was a close fight. He was at home and the crowd was all behind Kessler. Every time he threw a punch, he even missed or pushed me on my back foot. I was hitting him with shots because he was pushing me backwards. He was getting cheered and the judges can be influenced. I've not seen the, um, the fight you're talking about, the Williams fight, so I've not, not been able to judge it and I can't really comment on how bad the officiating was on, on that. But it does happen and it is a shame it happens, but you know, it's the, it's the people, the, the organize, organization, the governing bodies, WBC, WBA, the New Jersey State Commission, it's their job to make sure that things are done fair and above board every time a fight. I boxed Johnson there in June and as far as I was concerned, it was a clear win. I won most rounds, I dropped a couple of rounds early on, but one of the judges gave it to Johnson. You know, how ridiculous would that have been if Johnson would have won that fight? Because it was clearly a one-sided fight after round three or four to me. And one of the judges said, you know what, Johnson won that fight. So yeah, it's a concern, but it's out of my hands. It's Eddie Hearn that's, that's on the case. He'll speak to the um, relevant governing bodies and he'll speak to the commission. And I think with what's just happened with um, Paul Williams, I think now it's been highlighted and it's, it's, you know, it's in the forefront of people's minds. So the chance of that happening again, so close. It's the old lightning never strikes to twice scenario. So hopefully it will all be fair and above board. And there's a lot at stake for this fight with me and Ward. It's my WBC belt, his WBA belt, Super 6 World Boxing Classic Cup, which is the biggest tournament in world boxing for a long time, and the Ring Magazine. But So there's a lot of people watching the fight, the TV broadcasters are watching it, and the judges are under a lot of pressure to make sure they do the correct job and do the right thing. You know, this is a question I probably, I'm sure you haven't heard yet, but um, uh, I'm curious, uh, also the viewers are going to be curious about this, what is it like uh, to be on a press tour where you're in different cities and different days and you're asked the same questions and you've seen the same people over and over again and you're, you have to do the same face off with this guy you're about to fight? I mean, talk to me about it. Is it, is it mentally straining? Is it annoying? I'll uh, sum it up for you. Have you seen that film with Bill Murray called Groundhog Day? Yes. There you go. I answered your question. <laughs> so it's like Groundhog Day for it's you? It's just like that, yeah. Do you ever get like uh, by the last uh, stop on the press tour, like you're about to just like... I feel like punching someone who's holding the camcorder and a mic in my face. Yeah, I do. <laughs> Now, does he happen to be like a shorter Asian kind of looking guy? Or it's all, hopefully not? it's all part and parcel of the job. <laughs> Believe it or not, the same question gets asked time and time again, but I can give a different answer. Same sort of outcome of an answer but just a different angle and I quite enjoy speaking and it's, it's interesting so no it's, it's got to be done we've got to get it out there to the fans you've got questions you want answering we have to do it but it's tiring you know from London to New York and then we're going over to the west coast and then from the west coast back over to London and then when I get in London I've got a three hour drive up the uh, motorway so yeah it's, it's draining but it's got to be done we've got to let people know this fight's happening it's a big fight and we've got to raise awareness ideally I'd, I'd have a clone but we haven't got one. Sounds like a lot of fun but you know when I ask you of course I uh, Andre Ward has been classified as a very awkward fighter, so have you. Um, he says that there's no more difficult style to figure out than his own. Um, what, is, what is your take on that? Um, 
Well, I've not boxed him. I've seen him box, you know, and I've seen people have their success. I've seen people get beat. He's beat everybody as a professional, but he's been down on the floor early on. So you, you look at different fights and you pick you pick bits out of the fights where he's, he's, he's made mistakes and where he's got strengths and weaknesses, and you just try and draw from that. But ultimately, it's about me and what I do, and about me turning up in the best possible shape and being as physically strong and as brutal and fit mentally and physically as I can be. And that's what I concentrate on rather than worrying about what Andre Ward's going to do. But you feel you're going to win by knockout? I feel that I'm going to put him under some serious pressure and some serious heat. And if I don't knock him out, you know, the referee might just jump in. And it can happen early on or it can happen late on. One thing's for sure, Andre Ward can't knock out Carl Froch. You know, I wanted to ask him... It can't happen, but Carl Froch can knock out Andre Ward. And you've got to consider that. When I'm letting my shots go, I've got 12 three-minute rounds to connect on the jaw. And if that happens, if that connection happens, you're going to see a little shake of the legs. And um, I've got the ability to finish the fight. 